Coming up on today's show, Tesla's merger with SolarCity is approved by shareholders. Jaguar announces its first all-electric car in the form of the Jaguar I-Pace SUV. And Alaska Air makes wood-powered flight a reality. These stories and more next on 10. Like all our content, today's show is only possible thanks to the kind donations of viewers like you. Head to www.patreon.com forward slash transport evolved to find out how you can make your own donation today to keep us independent and impartial. And if you're already donating, thanks for your continued support. It's Friday, November 18th, 2016. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, and we're starting today's show with the news that the merger between California automaker Tesla Motors and California energy company Solar City has been given official approval by the overwhelming majority of shareholders from both companies. The news comes following a pair of specially convened shareholder meetings at which the merger was given more than an 85% approval by both Tesla shareholders and Solar City shareholders. It's worth noting, too, that this particular vote doesn't include the voting power of Tesla CEO Elon Musk, who owns a majority shareholding in both companies and thus recused himself, along with several other key Tesla and Solar City executives, from voting in the deal. Now officially approved, the merger is expected to take place in the next few days, with Tesla set to pay Solar City a total of $2.6 billion for the deal. Once completed, Tesla will slowly swallow SolarCity into the Tesla family, shifting a majority of its staff into its own company, and of course, add rebranded SolarCity products into the Tesla stores. That and become the world's first vertical energy company. And if that isn't enough Tesla news to start the show, I'm going to stick with a California company for just a little while longer to let you know that Tesla CEO Elon Musk, as promised, has announced a new update for the Tesla flagship Model S100D and Tesla Model X P100D electric cars that shaves a tenth of a second off both cars' 0 to 60 mile per hour times. Previously, the Tesla Model S P100D would accelerate from 0 to 60 in just 2.5 seconds with ludicrous mode enabled. But as of next month, it'll take 2.4 seconds to reach the same speed, with the Tesla Model X P100D taking 2.8 seconds to do the same thing. Why such a focus on shaving a tenth of a second off? Well, if we had to guess, it's because the Porsche 918 Spyder, a car which costs more than six times that of the Tesla Model S P100D, does 0 to 60 in 2.5 seconds. And while that tenth of a second doesn't make any difference in the real world, it's apparently a massive deal for petrol heads and CEOs eager to prove that their product is far better than anyone else's. A car that most certainly won't hit 60 miles per hour in anywhere near 2.4 seconds it takes more than three and a half times longer to reach the same speed, is the Honda Clarity fuel cell sedan, Honda's first production hydrogen fuel cell car that is due to go on sale in the US before the end of this year. As we've already reported, the Honda Clarity has the best range per fill of any fuel cell car currently on sale today and manages to beat the Toyota Mirai and Hyundai Tucson FCV in terms of load carrying capability and interior space. And this week at the LA Auto Show, Honda announced that it's both its rivals beaten on price too, thanks to a $369 36-month 20,000 mile per year lease deal. The deal, which also includes up to $1,500 of free hydrogen and car rentals for areas not covered by hydrogen fueling infrastructure, seems too good to be true and does suggest that Honda is massively underwriting the price of the Clarity fuel cell sedan in order to get those cars on the road. But before you get excited, remember that the Honda Clarity FCV is only going to be available at a total of 12 dealerships across California, and you'll need to undergo a rigorous selection process before Honda will even consider giving you one by which point you're probably better off going with something else instead. Sorry. British firm Jaguar Land Rover might not be the first company you think of when it comes to electric cars, having built a large amount of its reputation and heritage on large capacity V6 and V8 engined vehicles. But as you may have noted earlier this year, when Jaguar announced its entry into the FIA Formula E race series, the big cat's attitude towards electric vehicles has certainly shifted of late, with large teams now working on bringing a series of plug-in models to market. And at this week's LA Auto Show, we saw the first of these, the I-PACE electric SUV concept car, which Jaguar says previews a production electric SUV that it hopes to bring to market in 2018. Powered by a 90 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, the concept SUV has a pair of 200 kilowatt electric motors, one driving each axle, and says Jaguar should manage the 0 to 60 mile per hour sprint in under four seconds. 
that is slower than the Tesla Model X or Tesla Model S, but it's not bad for the company's first electric vehicle. Less impressive, however, is the CCS Quick Charge Standard, which Jaguar says will take 90 minutes to recharge the battery pack from empty to 80% full. Let's hope that Jaguar can tweak that and a few other key specs before bringing the iPace to market in just over a year's time, or it may find less of an interest from buyers than it had hoped for. We're back to Tesla for this next story, specifically the Tesla Model 3, which, as I'm sure you'll remember, was first unveiled back in March this year at a special event at Tesla's Hawthorne Design Studios in California. At the time, Tesla CEO Elon Musk said that we'd all have to wait for a part two reveal sometime in the future before we knew of all of the specifications for Model 3, leading to a great deal of speculation from both fans and industry analysts that Tesla was working very hard to bring some really impressive virtual reality cockpit and perhaps autonomous vehicle capabilities to the car before its launch next year. Well, this week, Musk said during the special Tesla Solar City merger shareholder meeting that Tesla would hold the final part of its Model 3 reveal sometime in the next three to four months, something which have, of course, got Tesla fans tingling with excitement. What the reveal part two will bring to the table, well, we're not yet knowing. We'll have to wait a few more months to find out, but when we know, so will you. Actually, there is one thing I can tell you about Model 3 right now that we learned this week from that very shame shareholder meeting, namely that Tesla plans to make supercharger access for long-range trips free for all Model 3 customers. The news coming straight off the back of the news from last week that Tesla was going to restrict free supercharger access starting January 1st for all new Model S and Model X owners to just 400 kilowatt hours per year might at first seem a little confusing. After all, why restrict supercharger access for more expensive Model S and Model X only to then say that Model 3 owners will get free supercharging for long distance travel? Well, it seems the key here is the word long distance, which suggests to me at least that Tesla is going to keep tabs on supercharger use. Since Tesla already knows where your car is and where you live, I'm guessing it's going to start using geofencing on Model 3 accounts, granting free supercharger access if you're more than a couple of hundred miles from home, but expecting you to charge up at home the rest of the time. It's a clever solution that should stop abuse of superchargers while simultaneously allowing Tesla to keep a competitive edge in the electric car marketplace. It's very clever. We're back to the LA Auto Show for the next story, where German automaker Volkswagen unveiled the new 2017 Volkswagen e-Golf, complete with larger capacity, 35.8 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack for a total 124 miles of EPA approved range per charge. That's a dramatic improvement on the 84 mile EPA range of the outgoing 2016 model and places the Volkswagen e-Golf ahead of the 2017 Nissan Leaf in the range charts and on par with the 2017 Hyundai Ioniq EV and behind the Chevrolet Bolt EV and upcoming Tesla Model 3. In addition to the improved battery pack, the new 2017 e-Golf gets the same updated front and rear as the rest of the Golf family, plus an updated interior with larger touchscreen display and more active safety features. Sadly, price has yet to be announced, but if we're honest and based on previous Volkswagen pricing, we'd not expect the new e-Golf to sell for anything less than $32,000 before incentives. Let's hope we are wrong. As to those who watched last week's show will know, Chinese billionaire Yung Ting Yi, CEO of Chinese firm Leco, and one of the main backers of US electric car startup Faraday Future, admitted last week that his company was running dramatically short of cash after effectively spending itself too thinly. At the time, we postulated that that would potentially mean bad things lay in store for both firms, and as predicted this week, Faraday Future announced that, pending some restructuring, it was temporarily halting construction at its massive facility just outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. While it's not confirmed that this is due to financial worries, it does seem more than coincidental that this news has broken just as Leco suffered some financial woes of its own. Although we should note that just before recording, we heard the news that Leco has seemingly managed to raise enough capital to lift it out of the danger zone, at least for now. What does this mean for Faraday Future and its promise of bringing its next electric car to market next year, its first electric car? Well, we think it means one word we've heard so much in the EV world. Delays, delays, and possibly more delays. Watch this space. 
A company having a better time just outside Las Vegas right now is Hyperloop One, which, following the announcement of its massive collaboration with the UAE on Hyperloop, has officially began construction of its Hyperloop test track, luring the first of many Hyperloop tube sections into place that will eventually form the world's first Hyperloop track. At the same time, just before recording, we heard that Hyperloop One has announced that it's in negotiations with countries of Sweden and Finland to bring Hyperloop between Helsinki and Stockholm, slashing the time it takes to travel between the two capital cities and improving business and trade links in the region. Of course, as we all reminded you last week, Hyperloop is still very much in its test phase, but it appears, despite detractors, that there are some truly massive investors and public stakeholders keen to see it become a reality. Let's hope it manages to deliver and isn't like that fabled monorail from The Simpsons. Eh? Recently, we told you that Japanese automaker Toyota, after years of bashing electric cars, was starting to admit that perhaps building electric cars would be a smarter option than continuing to push expensive, difficult-to-make hydrogen fuel cell cars to market. At the time, we mentioned that Toyota was hoping to bring some form of electric car to market in the next few years, but this week we learned that Toyota's electric vehicle program isn't exactly well-staffed, with the announcement that it's established a four-person in-house think tank charged with trying to brainstorm with Toyota's various departments to try and bring an electric car to market as quickly as possible. The reason behind such a small virtual department, says Toyota, is that it gives the electric vehicle group freer reign within the wider organization, allowing it to act more like a startup company than be restrained by traditional Japanese departmental politics. I don't know if it will work, but I'm very interested to see how it all turns out. And finally, here at Transport Evolved, we cover all kinds of cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter transportation, which usually means covering the worlds of alternative fuels, advanced automation systems, and occasionally exotic transportation technologies like the Hyperloop. But this week, we're going to finish with a news story about... But this week, we're ending with an airline, Alaska Air, which made history this week by flying a commercial flight from Seattle to Washington, D.C., fueled by airplane fuel consisting of 80% conventional jet fuel and 20% wood biofuel, lowering the overall carbon footprint of airplane travel significantly. Where did the wood biofuel come from? Well, byproduct of commercial wood harvests in the Pacific Northwest, which would usually end up being burned and destroyed, and in this case, was harvested, collected, and thanks to a Colorado company and the Northwest Advanced Renewables Alliance, converted into isobutanol. Eventually, it's hoped that isobutanol from wood waste could become a main stable of airline jet fuel, dramatically lowering the aviation industry's reliance on fossil fuels and hopefully lowering the carbon footprint of air travel too. Nice one. Well, that's your lot for today. As always, thanks for joining me, and please don't forget to leave your reactions and thoughts to the stories we covered in the comments below, as well as giving us a thumbs up and a share if you liked. And if you didn't, you know what to do. Give us a thumbs down and tell us why, because otherwise, well, we can't improve. I'm serious. As always, don't forget that you can follow us on Twitter at Transport Evolved. You can read our past and current articles at transportevolved.com, or you can check out our YouTube channel for our latest video updates. And if you liked what you saw today, please do consider keeping us independent and impartial by supporting our Patreon crowdfunding campaign from as little as just $1 per month over at patreon.com forward slash transport evolved. We're just tipping the scales now at about $1,150 per month, which after expenses becomes my sole salary. So I'm very appreciative of your help. Can't donate? Don't worry. Just spread the word, retweet our posts on Twitter, and make sure you tell your friends about our YouTube channel. That's about all there is to say. I'll try and be back next week with another roundup of the latest Transport Gold news. So until then, have a fantastic weekend. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and... Keep evolving!